Hi everyone, this is video tutorial 2.0 basics of Arduino. In this lesson, I will go over the setup and installation, verifying and uploading the code, and also some troubleshooting at the end. So as you can see, this is our Arduino over here. The Arduinos come in many different forms and shapes and in different types of model. In this case, this model is by SparkFun, and it's the Arduino Uno model. Over here is our breadboard. Our breadboard is used to organize all our sensors, hardwares, LEDs, wires, and etc. So to provide power throughout the whole breadboard, we're going to take our 5 volt pin and our ground pin and connect it to the following red and black pins on this end. So once it's plugged in, you're, you're able to provide power throughout the whole column. So, for example, if I plug in a red wire from the red line to 5 volts over here, I now have power throughout the whole column. And then I would also do the same with the ground pin. From here, connect the black ground pin from here to the black line over here. So, in the middle of the board, it is labeled as a grid system. As you can see, from left to right goes A to J, and then from up to down, it's labeled from 1 to 30. So for example, if a pin is plugged in from A1, it would also provide the same current or power towards 1A, 1B, 1C. So this means you have lots of space to work with while attaching resistors, wires, and different types of sensors in the same pinholes. You have your digital pins over here from 0 to 13, and then your analog pins over here from A0 to A5. I will explain the differences between analog and digital pins in lesson 2.1 RGB LED. For now, these pinholes will allow us to attach different types of hardware and sensor to our Arduino board. This USB over here will be connected to our computer and provide 5 volts throughout our whole system. The same with this pin over here, you can buy a power adapter and connect 5 volts through there. However, if you have a type of hardware that requires more than 5 volts, or let's say if it's a motor that wants to be more powerful, you want to attach 7 to 8 volts to it. You can plug in a battery, an external battery, into your breadboard over here. However, you just want to ground the same battery and ground it to the Arduino over here. This will ensure that your Arduino will not be shortened out. Make sure your type of hardware can withstand that amount of voltage before plugging it in. Now I will show you guys how to upload your code from your computer to the board. As you can see, I opened up the Arduino program over here. You will be presented with these two functions, void setup and void loop. Void setup basically is a function that runs initially once your program is started, and void loop will run infinitely till the Arduino is unplugged or stopped. So up here, we have our verify button. This basically verifies if our code is correct or if there's any other type of syntax errors. Our upload, our upload button, sorry, it's our button that we're going to use to upload the following code onto our board. Here's create a new document or sketch, open and save. Over here is our serial monitor. Our serial monitor basically acts like a console. We're able to output different types of variables and data so we can see it on the software side. So even if the Arduino is plugged into your computer and all set up, there's, we have to do two more things before we upload our code. First, we have to select which type of board we're using. Again, this is the Arduino SparkFun Uno model. And we have to select our USB port. So if you're on a Mac, it would, t it would typically say dev slash cu or ty dot whatever. This is, it also reads my iPhone's port, my Bluetooth. This is another Bluetooth module and then my USB port. My USB port is obviously going to be the one that's from our Arduino. So once I selected both of those, 
it would recognize the board and we're able to upload code to it. Once it's uploading, you'll see something like compiling, sketch, uploading, and then done uploading. If you saw, these two transmission lights were flashing. Remember, these lights are TX and RX, which stands for transmit and receive. So this is basically how you set up and install your Arduino. Um, if you're on a Windows, you might have to install some drivers. These drivers may be automatically found once plugged into your computer. If it doesn't recognize them, you might have to go online and find them manually. Um, sometimes I also find that if you're if it's not rec recognizing the device at all, just keep trying to plugging it back in and out or try another USB port. Um, I also read into some issues where there would be no power going through the board itself even though it's plugged in. You would know this if this light is off. If, if this is plugged in through my computer and this light is off, that means there's a problem with your board. That means the board's probably not working. If you're halfway through prototyping something and you see this light shut off once you try to plug in a wire through here, um, that means you're shorting out the board. That doesn't necessarily mean you've damaged or broken the board entirely. The board just shuts itself down if it if there's a short circuit. That's because it just it just wants to prevent any further damage to the board. So if that happens, just quickly unplug the board, take out the wire you just plugged in over here, and basically try to rewire it or relook at it again to make sure it's all correct. After it's all correct, replug it back in. See if the LED is on or off. If it's still off, do it again. If you're working with any type of hardware connection, like wireless technology, Bluetooth, or any type of serial connection between two devices, um, you won't be able to upload code if, if the type of hardware is plugged in or if there's a connection between two devices. That connection will interfere with your uploading connection. So, for example, if I have a Bluetooth chip plugged into my RX and TX over here, and if I decide to upload a code from over here, if I decide to upload something, it would give me an error because there's an interference with the connection. So I, ba I would basically just unplug my Bluetooth chip from here, upload the code, and then I can plug it back in afterwards. This won't affect anything at all afterwards. I, it would just restart the code, look for the connection, and then I can continue with, with whatever I was doing before. All right, this includes lesson 2.0, Basics of Arduino. In our next lesson, I'll go over how to, how to light up an LED and change its brightness and, and color levels with the, with the potentiometer. Thank you for listening, and have a good day.